This is Afternoons with Stan Thompson on 891 ABC Adelaide, ABC South Australia and Broken Hill. All right, are you feeling a bit down today? Do you know the last thing you want me to tell you is to get up off your seat and go for a walk? But apparently it's exactly what we should do. It's uh, widely accepted that exercise is a natural antidepressant. But how come? Joining us today is Anthony Hannon from the Florey Institute of Neuroscience and Mental Health. Professor, hello. Welcome to the program. Hello, Stan. I love ex. I could talk about exercise until the dogs come home. I really could. But getting up and doing something about it is another step. <laughs> what is it? What is it about exercise that makes it a, a good antidepressant? Well, this is a great question. This latest paper, I don't think they've really nailed it, but they've added a little more evidence and we don't entirely know but we do know increasingly that things that are good for the body including exercise healthy diet uh, a good sleep pattern and avoiding you know, toxins avoiding excessive alcohol these type of things mm. are also good for the brain so that's increasingly common findings and some of this is because the body's continually talking to the brain and the brain's continually talking to the body. So this latest study claims that when you exercise there are chemical changes that occur in the muscles and they release chemicals that can signal directly to the brain. Mm. So that is what they're claiming. I don't think they've really proven it in my opinion but uh, there's certainly some evidence that when you exercise, the chemical composition and including individual genes in the muscles are changed and they do release certain chemicals and those, some of those chemicals can reach the brain. So it's one possibility. It, it probably makes sense when you think about it because if you're exercising, it gets everything working at once and your body working at its optimum. And that's what we were designed to do. And it, that means a healthy body and a healthy brain together. And it probably does take away the depression. The problem is that if we are depressed, if we're a bit sad and we're sitting down, we tend to slump. You know, our body shape and everything and posture changes and we just become a little ball of depression sitting in the chair. And there's no way you're actually going to get much better unless you move. I I think there's something in that, although I'd also say it's such a, a common and devastating disorder that anyone listening, uh, that they should, if they feel they have uh, clinical depression, they should see their GP. And uh, some GPs will talk about exercise, but they may also talk about um, possible medications. They may also talk about psychological um, therapies like cognitive behavioural therapy. They may um, also talk about uh, things in the diet and sleep patterns that can mm. be improved. So all of you know these things that are uh, addressing the body. So I think for anyone who's, who's really worried about their, uh, their mental state, including depression, should certainly start with the GP and, and let uh, someone with that expertise use the evidence across a, a lot of studies to, to try and help uh, the individual. But I think that the interesting thing about exercise is that there's also evidence that it can help protect your brain in other ways and can be protective against uh, dementia, other forms of degeneration. And within dementia, there's obviously Alzheimer's disease, but it can be protective against um, Parkinson's disease. We showed it many years ago uh, for Huntington's disease. So the benefits of exercise to the brain go well beyond uh, depression. Well, to, to use a well-known phrase or cliche, use it or lose it, basically? Yes, yes, that's right. And the other element of that phrase is cognitive stimulation. So people who stay mentally active, mentally stimulated, seem to help protect their brains against uh, Alzheimer's and other forms of dementia. Talking to Professor Anthony Hannon this morning from the, or this afternoon, Florey Institute of Neuroscience and Mental Health. And if you'd like to join us with your thoughts, how exercise has or not helped you, please share it with us on 1300 222 891. Professor Anthony Hannon, our guest from the Florey Institute. Uh, Anthony, we were talking earlier before the news headlines about the fact that really, um, while we can accept that maybe that exercise is a natural antidepressant, 
when we're treating ourselves or going to our GP for a depressant, we've really got a, an antidepressant. We've really got to take on the fact that it's going to be a, all of those things. It's going to be exercise. It's going to be maybe a pill and probably just a change of lifestyle. Yes, that's right. And I think increasingly one of the, the really exciting things about medical research at the moment is genomics, the idea that we all have an individual genome that makes us more or less vulnerable to certain disorders, including brain disorders. And I think increasingly as we go along, it's now getting to the point where anyone's genome could be sequenced for as little as $1,000. So this technology is moving very, very fast. And we still don't really know what uh, the genome sequence means for each individual, but I think increasingly treatments may become tailored to individuals based on trying to understand more. We need to do a lot more basic research to understand what mm -hmm. causes depression. But I think you're right in terms of it's, it's never just one factor. Uh, a clinician may prescribe an improved lifestyle, including uh, exercise and diet and improved sleep patterns, but also may prescribe a drug and may prescribe a, a psychological treatment. The so back, I, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's a very challenging disorder and therefore uh, just a, a single approach, I think, is never going to be the whole answer. The background of this uh, report is some testing they did on mice. How do you make a mice depressed? A, ma a, mouse, uh, a mouse, how do you actually make it depressed? Yeah, this, is, this is a this is a great question. We we don't know what what a mouse might be thinking. So the only reason they think any of these tests are relevant to clinical depression is that when you give the mouse a drug, and people will be familiar with these antidepressant drugs like Prozac or Zoloft, uh, these classic antidepressant drugs, that these behaviours that they're measuring in the mice will respond to these drugs. And in fact, uh, some of these behaviours that are called depressive-like in mice will also respond to exercise. So if you give mice running wheels in their home cage, they'll actually run a lot. They like to run. They'll run kilometres a night. They're actually nocturnal animals, so they'll do most of their activity in running at night. Mm. And, and it can be found that uh, this e increased exercise, as well as uh, these antidepressant drugs, can uh, have behavioural effects that correct uh, these behaviours, and that's why we think these behaviours are relevant to uh, human depression. And there's also chemical and, and cellular changes that occur in the brains of the mice that look a lot like human depression as well. Yeah. Well, I'll have to go home and get myself a, what do you call it, a wheel, a wheel that the mice <laughs> goes around. Well, I think the human equivalent, yeah, whether it's a treadmill or just yeah. jogging, walking. Uh, yeah, a lot of it's people are now talking more about physical activity. It doesn't, it doesn't have to be the gym, doesn't have to be running that, uh, you know, incidental activity, walking, you know, using public transport, walking, uh, using the stairs instead of lifts. Uh, you're, parking, you're parking the car away from the office yeah. or, the, or, or the shop. Exactly. You hear of these, you know, taking 10,000 steps or more a day. Yeah. Uh, the idea, you know, the latest thing they're talking about is that sitting is the new smoking, the idea that people sitting down most of the day, whether it's at work or at home, uh, is actually really bad for you. Well, uh, yeah, that, I mean, in my job, I, I do it. I do nothing else. I, I, <laughs> the weekends are different, but you know, in some jobs, you 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 are from dusk to dawn. You're you're sitting. You're in this particular position, and you you don't realise that. You you need you need someone to tap you on the shoulder, I think, and to say, hey, exactly, it's time. Well, you I've got just up. I've just stood up. I, I, <laughs> I encourage you to do so. So I'm standing in my office now rather than sitting. Oh, um, hang on, <laughs> so, I'll try that. <laughs> Oh, no, my headphone cord won't reach. <laughs> or I could pretend and just back away from the microphone. <laughs> oh, Anthony, and what about, I mean, you don't have to answer this or we don't, you don't have to own up to it, but do you, do you have an exercise regime of your own? Well, I, I tend to be busy and uh, I, I cycle uh, usually once on a weekend, but I do actually take public transport, so I, I enforce it. Yes. I have to walk to the train and then I have to, I take the stairs at work and then I walk to get lunch. And so I find uh, if you make an effort, even, you know, without going to the gym, you can mm. actually get quite a lot of incidental exercise. I probably don't get enough, but 
but at least you're doing re- something. Yeah, you're, you're keeping, you're I'm keeping aware, things yeah, moving. As a, yeah. as a medical researcher, I'm, I'm aware of uh, how, how toxic, you know, sitting for 14 hours a day can be. So I'm trying to reduce it. All right. Off, off you go. I'm up. I'm standing now, Anthony. <laughs> good to talk to you. Thank you. G- great to talk to you, Stan. Professor Anthony Hannon from the Flory Institute of Neuroscience and Mental Health. Is he gone? <laughs> Sit back down again.